deepest thoughts I had to really meditate on, and that is that Christ is a lover of humanity, right? That Yeshua HaMoshiach is a lover of... And that's, that's in the Ethiopian, the, the Kedase. That's found throughout the Kedase and, and in Oriental, or as they call it, Orthodox, um, Orthodox Christianity, right? So he's a lover of humanity, and I find that being repeated in a lot of the works of the church that His Majesty caused to have translated for the Ethiopian, for the faithful, for the Mitmanon, in order to, you know, in order to strengthen, you know, in order to strengthen their faith. But then we have to recognize also what we've been talking about, the counterfeit sign, right? And so let's just say this right here, and we can see this um, counterfeit sign. We can see Antichrist, right here um, and we can see Christ right Antichrist and Christ and some folks think that this is racist you know or they think that it doesn't matter what color um, Jesus Christ is I know we've been speaking on it and, and, and touching on it and ministering on this particular subject matter but it's very important not just for us to get because many of us have gotten it um, and I, and I just like to thank a fellow co-laborer out there, um, that's Joseph Prince, um, checking out his shows and, you know, the grace and the favor of Christ to even have the Singaporeans and others, you know, throughout the world are getting this great message, the you Overs. Know, and we had another message prepared, and hopefully we'll get into that, but this is one of those gifts of Abba. Of Father in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Yeshua. But this brings us to this particular subject matter right here. Um, now you recall in the scriptures, right? And we're going to have to change up some of our search on what we were searching on. We have a couple of different messages, and this has happened to a lot of us who have, um, you know, been born again and 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 are growing, and and not just hearing the word, but but doing it, being about sharing even a little bit. You know, like the widow's might. When I look at some of the earlier teachings, they were like the widow's might. They were just like, like a little something, right? And so my, even now, I think it's, that's what I learned even more so is, is the widow's might. But let's look at Caesar for a moment. How do they spell Caesar here in, in, in this uh, old King James Version? Let's see. Okay, it's not that way, all right? Um, let's see. Is it, is it Kesar? Is it Kesar? C A E S A R? Okay, well, that's 41 times. We actually spelled it the other way. Just make a note of that when we tag up vids or whatnot. Now, Caesar's mentioned um, 41 times in the King James Version of the Bible, right? Um, but let's go to the area of Scripture. Let's go to Matthew first, since Matthew is a foundation. Matthew is where discipleship basically begins in, in the the one gale of Matthew, and Matthew also has a very important, um, according to ancient Ethiopian culture, a very important um, um, relevance to us as um, um, Christian Ethiopians, or some would say Ethiopian Christians. I think maybe Christian Ethiopians would be, would be better since it's all concerning Christ. But let's look at this right here in Matthew 22 and 21. There's three... Um, quotes right here, and when Yeshua came into the coast of Caesarea uh, uh, or Caesarea, you know, Philippi, he asked his disciples, this is a place, a location, he asked his disciples saying, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? He's asking, well, who do men say that I am. You know, in other words, who do men and people? Now, some, and this is interesting because right now we have this, um, we have this going on amongst many Rastafari and among I and I. Some think of Christ just as another, you know, another wise man or some as a philosopher or some as a teacher or some as a prophet, so forth and so on. It's very interesting right here, because some basically say, and there's some who even say today, you can check them out on the YouTubes or whatnot, you know, ministering and, and uh, it, gleaning in a sense, but they think that they're reapers, so they're out there 
in his majesty's name, you know, acknowledging his divinity, you know, saying in the Bible and the, quote, facts, but they say that, well, um, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christus, Jesus Christ was only a, um, or he was a prophet. And if you go to Matthew 16 and 13, right here, if you go to Matthew 16 and 13, um, and this particular episode, it goes into that. It proves that he is more than just a prophet. In fact, let's just scroll through this right here so we can get through some. So they answered, and they said that some say Johannes or John, right? Some say that, that he was, he was uh, John. Now, Christ asked the question. Here's the setup. The setup is the question. Whom do, what, whom do, um, whom do uh, men say that I am? Not who do you say, but who, you know, what's, what's the rumors out there concerning me and concerning who they think I am? And it says, and they said, some, some say thou art, now the, the italics is not really there, so if you read it, want to get a more raw reading, some John the Baptist, some Elias, some, I mean, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Now, there's a false teaching out there that Christ or that um, Eli uh, John the Baptist, Elijah, and Christ are all the same per person. That is false. That's folly. You know, that's folly. John the Baptist and Elias and Yeshua, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, our black Lord and Savior, are not, you know, are not one and the same person. You understand? They're not the same person. Like there, there, there's a very serious flaw in that. You understand? Even the word. Study the word. Find the truth for yourself, and don't go after, you know, these um, who think they are teachers, but they are not able to interpret. You understand? Or to hear the word. You understand? Anyway, verse 15 says that he saith to them, but who, whom say ye? Who do y'all say that I am? Right? Who do y'all say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou, Ante, uh, Moshiach, you are Ha Moshiach, you are the bane of the living, uh, you know, um, Elohim. You are the son of the living God. You understand? El Chai. You understand? The, the, the one who is Chai. Or Chai is Hebrew. Yeah, like we say, uh, Yahai, Yahai, or Yahweh, Chai. In other words, Chai, like that El Chai or the symbol Chai that you see some Jews or uh, other people wearing, you know, the symbol of the two letters, like as that, that Jews, a lot of Jews wear that. So you, you know what I'm talking about. That basically means life or living. Now that you're the son of God, but that you are the son of the living God. Now I have this... Um, I have, I'm just kind of curious, just before I say it, I just want to confirm it right here. We're in chapter 16, so let's go to chapter 16 for a moment. All right, chapter 16. Because this message is upon I and I to share with the I. So you can recognize um, Caesar, we call this Caesar versus, you know, Caesar versus Christ. Caesar versus Christ. I'm just going to give thanks. <laughs> give thanks. Um, we we'll won't go to this Hebrew um, New Testament for a moment. 16 and 16, 16, 16. So let's go to 16, 16, and just get the, the 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 expression as it's translated, as it's translated right here. So um, Peter said, "Ata, right? Ata who ha um, mo uh, shiach bain Elohim hayim." or Chayim, Elohim, or the Bain, Elohim Chayim. In fact, so you can see what Ina is looking at right here. You understand? This is a Hebrew um, New Testament, and we read from, let's get a pointer. I thought we had a pointer over here. You understand? You know, we're just like, just going forward with this right here. So I don't know if we had a pointer, so we can point to it. Because we don't want to really use a pen and mark it, but right here, this right here. Now, now you see the verse over here, right? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, right? Thou art the Christ, or Moshiach, right? So over here he was reading, Atta, 
right? That's Atta right there. Atta who, right? Atta who, right? Ha Moshiach, Ha Moshiach, Bain Elohim Chayim, Elohim. So the Bain Elohim Chayim. This is what he says. This is what he says right here, right? The son, right? You see that? Like the son of the, the son of the living God, not of the dead God, not the God of the living, but the God of Abraham, right? Yitzhak and Yaakov. You understand the triune God? You understand? That's why that name, Kadamawi Chayla Shalase, the first power of the Trinity refers to the manifestation of the of the Father, right? The Father, the Av, right? Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba Tachin. So this is what Petro says, right? And if you want to see the cover of this, this is this right here. The New Te We'd like to get some more copies of this, this New Testament, right? The New Testament in um, Hebrew. So it's a pretty good, a very good translation right there. All right? All right, um, Miss Ghana. So we just wanted to go through that right there. So... Let's, let's move a little forward, right, and the, and the new translation, Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, or HaMoshiach, the Son, the Bane, right, ha, uh, ha Elohim, right, um, Ha Elohim Chayim, right, the Bane Ha Elohim Chayim, the Son of the Living God. Now, you'll find that the Ethiopian eunuch in um, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verse 37, now that verse 37 and Acts of the Apostles, and to show how Satan Diablos, the hater of, of Beta Israel, the true, the ethnic, the real seed people, we ask why there's racism. You understand? Know why have black folks been treated so? Because they are the so called Negroes, right? Or biblically, they are the Hebrews. And so we're going to touch on the, the false or the counterfeit sign related to the state of Israel, but at the very same time, our father, Kedus Abatachin, right? Our, our godfather, the king of kings, also established his sign, too, in 1948. So they got a land from the United Nations, and we got it from our kinsman redeemer. And we're talking about Shashimani. You understand? Well, not just Shashimani. Shashimani is the gate. It's, 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 it's like the first. You understand? You know, it's the first part of that inheritance made, revealed, and manifest. But there is much more, brothers and sisters. So Yeshua, Jesus Christos, right, he answered, right, and said to him, he said, Blessed art thou, Simeon, bar Yona, or the son of Jonah, bar Yona, for, or son of the dove, in other words, for flesh and blood, right, remember, flesh and blood, with them hath not revealed it to thee. In other words, and now see, there's a deeper point. Some would say, well, flesh and blood did not re reveal it because nobody told him because he got that spiritually, and that is true. But you have to also recognize that Yeshua HaMoshiach was not yet um, glorified. You know what I'm saying? He was not yet glorified. Now, this is what we're going to touch on right here, the, the true sign versus the false sign. In other words, he was not yet glorified, you understand, with the outstretched arms. You see the outstretched arms, that he redeems I and I with that outstretched arm. So he was not yet glorified, and this is called the Eucharist, right, partaking in that memorial, metasebia, what we call Fasica or Pesach, you understand, the bread and the wine, the symbols, the bread and the wine, Melchizedek, Melchizedek, Edek, right, but then we have it as the flesh and the blood, that's why um, Ephesians says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So now the higher understanding of what Yeshua now answers, or what he answers and says to, to, to Petros, calling him Simon bar Yona, right? He says that flesh and blood have not revealed it to thee. Because for many of us it's that flesh and blood, speaking of the Eucharist, partaking of of his flesh and of his blood, and there's no kind of cannibalism. You know, everybody say, oh, this is like Christianity. Can't. No, some folks have crept in on the weirs. You understand? And one of the key signs they've crept in is their image. 
Thus, we have right here, we have Caesar Bogiers. Now, I want you to keep this in mind. We're on a Caesar versus Christ. This is Caesar Bogiers. Well, really, yeah, this is Caesar Bogiers. You know what I'm saying? This is that image that Revelation speaks about. You know what I'm saying? That image and how many people will be deceived. People will fight and argue with you and say, this is the Jesus, even though we can prove that it's actually um, Caesar Borgia, Borg, Borgia, who is the um, son of Pope Alexander VI, and this goes back to like the 15th, 16th century, and, and the Italian Renaissance, the, Medi the Medici, and Machiavelli, and all that is tied up there, 1492. You add 400 years, and we come to the time of the, the man-child, or Lige Teferi, right? And then we add another one, 20 years, and we're here in 2012. So some say, so what? You know what I'm saying? Some say, so what? Well, allow them to say, so what? You know what I'm saying? Let, let it manifest. Let it reveal itself. But for I and I, we know this. You know what I'm saying? We know this. The Word verifies it. The Scriptures verify But His Spirit, most of all, is what verifies it, all right? So we're going to get into this a little bit more, but we're going to lay a foundation for this particular teaching. So flesh and blood had not revealed it to thee. So not another person or people, but really if you look at it in the context of the Scripture, it was because he was not glorified, yet Petros, you understand, still was able to see this in spirit. Petros was able to see him being glorified over the skull and bones, over Golgotha over death, hell, death, and the grave. He was able to see that while some said, you know, some said you're this one and you're that one, um, you know, um, he said, well, who do you say? And, and look what uh, Petro said, and look what Yeshua responded. He said, he says, he says um, it to thee, he revealed it to thee, but my father. He said it was his father, our father, our Abba, which is in heaven, who has revealed it, you know what I'm saying, to Simon, to Peter, to Petros, right? Okay? Now, if we go further right here, he says, and I say, and I say, remember red letters, Yeshua's words, the, the real Yeshua in spirit and in truth, uh, yet, and I say also to thee that thou art Petros, or Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You know, hallelujah, but brothers and sisters, I didn't even think I was going to get on, on this point. Um, but I just have to j j just give you a word on this, so if you can study up and follow up on your own on this until we present a, a, a lecture or a teaching. The gates of hell and death, see, this is what we're talking about, these stargates that are opening up, all this witchcraft that they're doing, you know, and all this occultism, all this looking for the God particle, the Hig, the Hig, the Hig, the Hig Besim, the Hig Bosim, the Kana Bosim, no, the Hig, Hig in, in Ethiopic means law, in, 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 in the Ethiopic and the Royal Amharic, it means law, so the Hig Bosim, they call it the God particle, the God particle, the search for the God particle, you know, we're saying that God particle, but, 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 but this is, there's a whole deeper level of that. Because you remember, each of us, especially as being born again and receiving Yeshua HaMoshiach, you know what I'm saying? In other words, receiving his, his um, flesh and blood, you know what I'm saying, as manifested on the Mescal, receiving that, you know what I'm saying? We have in us that, that, that um, deposit. I think the Bible calls it a deposit. There's a deposit that's put in us. You know what I'm saying? It's actually the God particle that's put in us. You know what I'm saying? So what Yeshua is saying right here to, to, to uh, Petros or Simon um, um, Bar Yonah, he's saying right here that you are, right? He says, I say to you that thou art Petros, right? Petros, which means um, rock. Now, if you look up rock and a different kind of rocks, it's interesting too. Because we have a piece of rock, is a petros, a piece of rock. But then if you look at the next word, petra, so there's petros, petra, that means a mass of rock. So in other words, you are a chip off of the old block, is what Yeshua HaMoshiach was saying to, to Peter. 
You understand? And it's upon that chip, it's upon that particle. If you have that particle, that deposit, the widow's might, so to speak. You, you know what I'm saying? Even if you have a little faith, you see, and, and for those who are recognizing that little faith, you're seeing the gates of hell are opening up in your lives. It, it seems like, you know, why are all these people dispolarized against me right now? I used to roll with them. I used to hang out with them. And this is interesting because the Holy Spirit had I and I looking into um, Peter, Peter chapter, um, chapter 4, First Peter chapter 4, at verse 4, 4 and 4, 1 Peter 4 and 4, where it says, Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Now, these are the same folks we were down with, but they think it's something strange thing that we're no longer running around with them all crazy-fied, right? And I want to show the eye of them this. I was going to post it up, but right here, well, you already see that part right there, but let's go to the first presentation right here. Do you find yourself right here? Do you find things are like this for the eye, as Rastafari? You know what I'm saying? Now, now some are too prideful. They're caught up on their um, self-righteousness. You understand? Self-righteousness. They haven't received. You know, they're, they're going about to establish their own righteousness, as Romans say. Because we're living in a Greco-Roman you know, um, manifestation of the prophecy. Here's where we're at right now. I was wondering how actually all this is going to come together. You know, you're studying things and, you, and, you, and you're presenting things and you want to share things with your brothers and sisters. And you're like, wow, there's a lot of stuff. And it seems like it's not all connected, but you just have to stay grounded and have him continually, you understand, um, lead you and guide you by the men that could do. So we did this before. We call this Rastafari discipleship right here. Right, and this is the sinful man or Babylon. This is where we, this is where we're starting out at. You know, and Babylon's foundation is death, is moat, the Canaanitish, the Kanaanu, the Kanaanu false god. Right, and so we come out. We're able to go beyond that. Right, beyond death with the Ital food. You understand the total food, getting into the microbiotic. Now everybody's into organic food and health food. But Rastafari, they looked at us strange. What you don't eat no meat? Yeah, if you don't eat no meat, you're going to die. You know, you need to get some meat. You understand? But Rastafari already stepped out on this. You know what I'm saying? Stepped out on this. And then even the dreadlocks, you know, on the dreadlocks, the locks. I think what's more important than just the dreadlocks, the outer symbol, is really the inner meaning when we look at the Nazarite vow in Numbers chapter 6 and the point of it to be separate. You understand? To be caduce. As he is Caduce, he is our Caduce Abatachin, right? And then the music, the thanks and praise music. I wanted to put in here Naya Bingi. I know, you know, but, but, but Naya Bingi, the principle of Naya Bingi, you understand, in true faith in Christ reaches, if you, if you think about it, the principle of it, you understand, but the principle has been lost amongst uh, tried and tradition, you understand. Now, John Music, the thanks and praise. In Ephesians, what we had left off earlier in the posting about Rastafari, continuity, 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 itinuity, or sustainability of John's kingdom, 2012 and beyond. People tell, oh, 2012, 20. No, what's our preparation for 2013? You understand, the day after tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? So that even leads us a little bit further. And, 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 and let's, let's not just speak on this, but let's also show you on this as well. Turn your Bibles, brothers and sisters. Carlos, well, not brothers and sisters. Even if they have the opportunity to turn the Bible, not going to turn the Bible. You know, you've got curious folk, and it's all right. This does not offend us. Um, Ephesians chapter, chapter um, 5 Verse 19, we had left off early with Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, uh, verse, um, verse, I think, 17. And here we're going to go to part 4, the walk, the halakha, the halakha, which is the Hebrew word, which means how we carry ourselves. Akahed, bamarinya. You understand? It's translated often as conversation or our behavior. You understand? Our deportment. You know what I'm saying? Like our vibes. How I and I, in Rastafari, we say how one is yachting or how, how them triding. Not 
using tried as tradition, but using triding in the sense of how they're walking. So akahed is from mahed, heda, which means to go or to walk in Amharic. The same with halaka in the Hebrew, right? So anyway, it says the walk and the warfare of the, it says believer, but we upgrade, 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 bilaiva, upgrade, Ethiopic upgrade, mitmanan, the one who has amen. You understand? Amen be Yeshua's name. Amen be Christ's name. Revelation 3 and 14. Check it out for yourself, all right? So um, the, the, it's a, this is about the walk. How do we walk? Now notice something right here. We're, if we're already on this Rastafari level right here, this is where we're at. But now when we look at this, it's like what his majesty says, where are we to turn to for answers to questions that have never been asked? And this now brings in another book that we kind of brought forward. And we got to thank some of our Benjamite brothers in the Federation, you know, um, the, the, the separate corporation known as Local Number One, but still for printing this particular book right here. Well, we had a small role to play in that, you understand, but this book, the speech book, and we have the speech book in a soft cover, you understand, a soft cover at the, at I and I books, um, 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 books, you go to the website. All right, um, check, the, check the description of this video. Or if we miss this video, check the description of the next video. It, it, should, be, it should be out there, lojsociety.org. Now let's go to where his imperial majesty is speaking before the, the I'm about to say, League of Nations. What, Freudian slip? You know what I'm saying? No, um, it's the United Nations. And where he's speaking before the United Nations, right, and um, uh, many of y'all probably know this particular this particular uh, speech, but we're going to go over this particular speech again right here where, um, let, let's get this speech right here, uh, um, international politics, is it under international politics or is it under UN? Um, give me one moment. Um, okay, wait, 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 he speaks of the ultimate challenge. We're in this time of the ultimate challenge right now, right? We're in, we're in the time of the ultimate challenge at the very time that we find ourselves, at this very time that we find ourselves. So His Majesty's word to us on the ultimate challenge is, 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 is fundamental for us to, um, perhaps we need, we need to calm down a little bit. You know, because we're really excited to share this with the eye, and I think that we're going over, you know, when you're looking for something and you keep passing over the page, you know, you keep passing over it, you understand? Um, where His Majesty speaks about uh, United Nations. Where are these United Nations, these UN speeches right here? You understand? Um, these UN speeches right here. Okay, that's uh, 368. 368. We give thanks for table of contents. Three six three six eight, all right? Three six eight. It's the one that begins twenty seven years ago as Emperor of Ethiopia I mounted the rostrum in Geneva, Switzerland to address the League of Nations to appeal for relief from the destruction which had been unleashed against my defenseless nation by the fascist aggressor. Right? And if you go into that speech, that's where we have the until the philosophy and on page three seven seven the ultimate challenge. He says, when I spoke at Geneva, at Geneva, let's see if we can bring up um, a picture of the King of Kings right here on this, the Mekonan bait, right? When His Majesty, okay, right? Where His Majesty spoke at the, right? We'll keep that right there. So he says, um, when I spoke at Geneva in 1936, there was no precedent for a head of state addressing the League of Nations. I am neither the first nor will I be the last head of state to address the United Nations, but only I have addressed both the League and this organization in this capacity. Something I'm beginning to, I'm, I'm remembering right here that, that I wanted to present elsewhere. Let's see if we can, if we, if we have enough room to show you this right here. This is another book, right? And it was something very interesting. We, we were looking at some old archives and files, and it, 
it showed His Majesty both. Okay, here it goes right here. See if we can get a, a, a glimpse of this. Can you see this right here? Can you see this right here? 1936, right? Right, the League of Nations. If you look on the Internet, look on the Internet for League of Nations and then look for image, images and try to get their symbol. It's the Chrysler symbol. It's the Pentagon symbol. That was a symbol for the League of Nations back there. Wow. How interesting is that? Then in 1963, so this is this speech right here, historic quotations of the century. You get, get a snapshot of this right here. This will be a good... Um, a good kind of word art, you know, then 36 and 63. Is there anything up with that at the League of Nations and at the United Nations? Yes, it's, it's the word that we have in the prophets where he says, it's my determination to bring together the nations. It's his determination. If you follow a little more, it speaks about, you turn to us a pure language and from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, even, my suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed, that's I and I. Rastafari, that's I and I, true and faithful Ethiopians and Hebrews and righteous among the Gentiles. That is I and I. All right, so it's this particular speech that we are um, referencing right here, right? Um, right here where, where Abba spoke, right, in 63. All right, so this is from this particular, I don't know if you can see this, this particular book right here published, you know, um, the 12 tribes of Israel actually put this out, which was formerly a EWF local, right, 63, right? It's a document called His Imperial Majesty's Visit to Friendly, right? His Imperial Majesty's Visit to Friendly um, Countries. <laughs> uh, well, so let's go on with this right here and just, just dovetail this and connect this. It says, that the problems which confront us today are equally unprecedented. So the problems, right, that we are confronted with today in the present time are equally unprecedented. You understand? Are equally unprecedented, right? Let's put it like this right here. Are equally unprecedented, right? Are equally unprecedented. Take that light. Yeah, all right. Are equally unprecedented, right? Um, they have no counterparts in human experience. Remember the gates of hell. Remember what Christ says? Upon this little rock, this chip off of the old block. In other words, you know, some of us may think, well, I don't have, don't know I'm hard like that. I don't have a lot to contribute. I don't have this or I got this problem. I'm still, you know, trying to overcome certain things. And you, you, you know what I'm saying? But just behold Yeshua HaMoshiach. Behold his word and that spirit and that truth. You understand? Behold his outstretched hands. You understand? Behold his outstretched hands. And that's, that's what's very interesting even in the scripture when it talks about, you know, with outstretched hands. You know, and then that's, that is him on the cross. That is Yeshua. That is our Savior, our kinsman. You understand? Our spiritual kinsman redeemer. But then for us as, as the ethnic people as true Israel, as the Beta Israel, you know, saying, as the Beta Israel, there's also a buying back. And a buying back usually, you know, we know is concerning like with slavery, you, you know what I mean, or with some situation where you needed um, one to redeem you, you know, saying, to recover you, you know, saying, as we are also to help our brothers and sisters, you know, saying, when they fall into a a fault. You understand? Also paying attention to I and I self, at least we're not overcome and overtaken in that. So he says that there are no counterparts in human history, human experience. That even though these are the days like Noah, but it's all ages, almost like all evils from all time. So we have the population so much on this earth at this time too. They have no counterparts in human experience. Men Search the pages of history for solutions, but uh, for precedents, but there are none. You understand? But there are none. There are no, um, you know, there are none. In fact, it's only the Bible if you refer to the, um, you know, the other teachings, you understand, of our um, kinsman redeemer. You understand? I just noticed something right here. Excuse me, brothers and sisters. I just... 
notice it's like they must have took off um, two five, two five. Cause we'd be monitoring some some other events. They took off two five. You know, that is very very shocking. Wow. You know what I mean? You just notice that some channels that will give you news and other stuff. You know what I mean? Um, they they kind of taken these things off because too many people are getting you know too wise to certain things. But 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 don't behold Yeshua. So he says right here that. Um, this then is the ultimate challenge. Where are we to look for our survival? Where are we to look for our survival, brothers and sisters? 2012. Suppose this day coming up in December is, is like, the, like, like the worst case scenarios. Are we prepared? Forget about just the physical things or where, but are we prepared in our heart and mind and our faith? You understand? Um, 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 to meet you know, to meet Adonai, if necessary, in the ether? Are we ready for ascension, if necessary? You understand? We're too caught up on worldly, worldly stuff. You understand? Um, the flesh, materiality. This don't mean that material and spiritual have got to be bound for the spiritual is that rock, is that foundation. Right? So we have to get our spiritual house in order. This, then, is the ultimate challenge. Where are we to look, Right? It says, where are we to look, right, to look for our survival, for answers to the questions which have never been posed? Like, are there really aliens? Are aliens really demonic entities? You know what I'm saying? Is, is what people do when they do seances and other rituals, you know what I'm saying? Even when they do these scientific things like opening up stargates, are they bringing in demons? If you check out Chris Everett's films and Secret Space, and there's a lot of very compelling information out there from a variety of different sources. We may not agree on some things, but you begin to see that there is, there is a, a, a um, like, like the people looking at the elephant, you remember that one? Like all the people, one person is in the trunk and the other person by the tail. And they said, this, this string feels very thin. And they say, no, it feels very thick. It feels like a, 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 a tree. So one is in the front, one is in the back. The other one said, no, it just feels smooth. It feels like, you know, you know could they maybe feel on the side or the belly or whatnot like that. But now when you begin to understand what is being looked at, then you begin to say that everyone's looking at the same thing but from different um, vantage points because all beginning to paint a picture is all coming and fulfilling that vision so people without a vision perish so we have to have the right vision this is why we focus on the ethnicity of our Lord and Savior it's not the just because he's black doesn't mean we're saved because he's black don't be foolish or doolish you know what I'm saying there's a particular reason for him taking on our our humanity Yo, send in the womb of Kedistin Gulmarium, in the womb of the Black Madonna. There's a reason for that. Yo, send for the true Beta Israel, for the true Black Israel. But there's a counterfeit sign in the world. Yo, send there's a there's a counterfeit sign that is in the world. For, so as Matthew goes on and say that we're in a time when you know that we're gonna have to be looking out for our survival spiritually. You understand, and in so-called real time, or 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 you know, in 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 in, in this world, so to speak, right? Or through uh, this world, because this world's passing. So we have to make sure we're rooted and grounded that when it passes, we don't pass with it. We're not too caught up. We're not caught up in it. For the answers to questions which have never before been posed, we must first look to the Almighty God, who has raised man above the animals and endowed him with intelligence, intelligence and reason. We must put our faith in him that he will not desert us or permit us to destroy humanity which he created in his image. Now, something very interesting about this, if you, if you really over, if you overstand his majesty from his majesty's faith-based perspective, you understand that that man is tempting the Almighty, and the Almighty says, if it wasn't for Yeshua HaMoshiach, you understand mankind would have already been destroyed. We would have never had the visitation of Kedemawi Haile Selassie if it was not for Yeshua HaMoshiach, if the Son had not come first. You understand? And provide that grace, because He is holy. 
He is Kedus Abatach, and he is Abba Kedus. He says we must look into ourselves. You've got to look into yourself, not just at your flesh, you understand, but into yourselves, into the depth of our souls. We must become something we have never been and for which our education, experience, and environment have ill-prepared us. We must become bigger than we have been, more courageous, greater in spirit, larger in outlook, speaking about the vision of God in Christ. We must become members of a new race, of a new race, as Bani Ha Elohim, as children of God, overcoming petty prejudice. You know, one more time we hear about, oh, what, can a, a white person can't be a roster, a roster? What kind of nonsense? Well, where do you come from? You understand? I mean, where you come, only a panhandling African perspective, so-called pan-African perspective, gives you that sort of um, nonsense because it's, it's just world. It's just fleshy. It got to grow up. We have to, it says, owing our ultimate allegiance, not to nations. So we love Ethiopia. But if Ethiopia want to remain unrepentant, then Ethiopia is going to suffer. You understand? Plain, we love her, but we know that today's Ethiopia is not yesterday's Ethiopia. is not true Ethiopia. We know this holy Ethiopia. You understand? The, the holy Ethiopia would not find this offensive. In fact, the holy Ethiopia would say, this looks look just like what, what we have. Look at this. You understand? But the secular, worldly Ethiopia, you understand, is caught up. You understand? It's caught up between the rock, you understand, and an ignorant place. It's caught up with Caesar, Caesar Borgias. And we're going to explain this whole Caesar, you understand, Caesar, which is Antichrist versus Christ, and how we as that natural people nearly 2,000 years ago brought this almost on ourselves because of our word. You understand? We brought this, in, in a sense, on us. Right? Oh, and our ultimate allegiance, not to nations, but to our fellow. Remember fellow, our fellow, to fellowship, fellow men, fellowship. Some people think this means people out there. No, our fellows, our Christian, our true and faithful fellows, you understand, within the human community, community. And this is the rock of I and I establishing sustainability. You understand, whether on a small scale, you understand, a family scale, whether a community in this time preparing. You so that's a little bit, you know, that's a little bit um, into something else that we want to teach on, but it still is connected with this main idea right here, right? Let's, let's move this right here, right? It's still connected with this main idea right here. All right, so now how do we cross over? How do we cross this divide? You know what I'm saying? We talk about black redemption, but we're not looking at the black redeemer. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, we're looking at for the gift, but not for the giver. You know what I mean? We're looking for the life, but not the life giver. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, one time some, well, some still say that, you know, give, give thanks for life and for the life giver. Some would say just give thanks for life. Well, what about the life giver? Think about it for a moment. You know, so you give somebody something, and they are like, wow, look at this, look at this, and they're just talking about how great it is, but they don't even say thank you. You know, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, so there's this gap right here. How do we bridge this gap? Cause we're looking at Holy Jah, right? We're looking at Zion, Holy Mount Zion. We are looking forward to Jah eternal life, but there's this gap. So some stand on Aital, some might stand on Dreadlock, some stand on reggae music, and all of them only take you to this halfway mark. Remember the music? The music take you the furthest, because when we was organizing this right here, we, 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 we did one version first, and then the Holy Spirit spoke to say, make music the longest one. I said, why music the longest one? Because music is about thanks and praises. You understand, praises is a high, eyes is a high, high, high thing with the Father. If it's coming from, it says give praise with overstanding, with understanding. If you know, as Christ says, we know what we worship. You understand, y'all don't know because we know because salvation of Moa and Bethlehem, Negeti, Yehuda. So that's why it says right here in the part 4, Ephesians 5 and 18, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess but be filled with the Spirit. We can say that today as be not, don't, don't get so high. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Until you're out of John's sight. 
You know what I'm saying? Don't get so high. You know, as they use the wine was a part of that, what, sacrament. Let's understand this. The wine was part of that sacrament. So is the anabosa. And we could, we could just teach on this particular verse right here how it can really help to reform a lot of our out of order, out of his order, the true Melchizedek order, behavior or misbehaviors, but be filled with the Spirit. You see, so even before we take of that, of that anabosa, we're filled with the Spirit. Overstand, overstand what I'm saying before we even take of it. It's not eating the bread and the wine because they have been directly transferred into the flesh and the blood and all that. No, 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 no. It's that we have that faith in spirit, you understand, and partaking of that metasebia, you understand, in, 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 in spirit and in truth, it, 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 it affirms that God particle. It affirms that that deposit, right? Then it goes into the inner life of the spirit-filled mitmanon. Someone know, well, you know, I've been seeking my, I know, repenting. I've been looking at a lot of my ways and a lot of things I've been doing, so forth and so on. You really need to check out Romans. Romans uh, chapter, I think it's uh, maybe 6, 7, 8. You understand? Those chapters right in there. You understand? Um, keep reading, keep studying. Like I, I often advise ones and ones, the word, being into the scripture and the word is very important because being into the word, it's like, um, it's like you are putting an investment. You're investing. It's like when David says, I've hid your words within me so I might not sin against you. You know what I'm saying? We're putting that word, even if you don't fully understand, get familiar with the word because what will happen is that the Holy Spirit will, will guide you or will touch a particular word and you'll be like, where have I heard that before? Mm-hmm. Like even right now when I'm speaking, sometimes I'm, I'm seeing a part of a scripture. I might not remember where the scripture is and give thanks for the tools that we have in this time of Donnell's prophecy where information go to and fro. You can look it up. When I look it up, I try to exercise the discipline of writing it down. You know what I'm saying? In my debtor, you understand? Because I and I are to be those debtor. You understand? If you can understand, debtor is the tabernacle. But it's interesting, like, writing the word down in that book, that notebook is also a debt to her, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So speaking, it says right here, verse 19, speaking to yourselves in Psalms. Let's bring up Yeshua HaMoshia, right? That, oh, well, actually, we, um, in fact, let's just go on this right here. So we're focusing on John Music crossing this gap. I know the subject matter of this. Some people might have clicked on it. Caesar, you know, Caesar versus Black Christ or versus True Christ depends on how it's going to finally be put up there. You know what I'm saying? Some be like, well, what is this about? You know what I'm saying? I mean, well, what about Caesar? Because they want to talk about, yeah, that Caesar Bourgeois is, that's a white boy and such. And we have to get beyond the flesh, but we have to note the flesh. Remember, there's a principle in the Bible. I was reminded this in watching Joseph Smith, uh, Joseph, uh, it's, uh, not Joseph, not that, not, not that Mormon guy, no, 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 no. Our Singaporean brother, preacher and pastor, um, Joseph Prince, where he reminded I and I of what even we studied and learned in the school field that there's a principle in the hermeneutics of the Bible. Because some people know the Bible, but they don't know the real laws. They don't know the, the order, the formulas, you know. Not even formulas, but there are certain disciplines. You understand it's like in construction or in building, because we're supposed to be building, not just running around as puffed up novices with a little bit of knowledge. You understand falling in the condemnation of the devil. What's the condemnation of the devil? The devil fell from grace. You understand? He fell from that grace. You understand? But there's a principle that says um, that the first things are natural. Mm -hmm. But the fullness of it is spiritual. So the first things are the natural things. And you're saying, and you'll see that if you write down that law, or I don't want to call it a law, but you write down that principle. You know, saying as you're studying the scripture and studying certain stories and certain word pictures that the Almighty gives us, because we're like His children, so He teaches us in these um, examples. You know, saying with these word pictures here, right? So it says right here, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. What it says, speaking to who? Speaking to yourselves. Mm -hmm. But brothers and sisters, how do we speak to ourselves? A lot of times, you know, I mean, that, that's a whole other 
matter right there. How do, but how do we speak to ourselves? Do we speak to ourselves in, as it says right here in Ephesians 5 and 19? Do we speak to ourselves in Psalms? When we're going through something, do we, do we remember a word of the Psalms? Do we remember a, a, a word of the Scripture? And, and that's how we, you know, they, they use this thing in, in, in certain Eastern, um, some Eastern um, 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 disciplines, some Eastern religions, talk about mantra. Mm-hmm. Talk about mantra, right? And they said mantra is essentially a protection of the mind. That's what the word and the Psalms are. That's why we say psalms and proverbs are basic discipleship tools. In fact, not just basic as discipleship. They, they are like your, your, your regular meal, like, like breakfast. Call it breakfast, your spiritual breakfast. Or they should be like your spiritual breakfast. They know it's always good, they say, to have breakfast. Because mm-hmm. so while you're resting, you're probably not into, you know, you, you know you're, you're in the spirit world, so to speak, or the astral. It depends on where you travel. You understand, or just in a state of rest. You understand, and then when you wake up, you break that broke that fast because you're not reading the words, you're not in the words, so forth and so on. Though there are some who are maybe more disciplined, and they go into their rest with the word, which is a kind of a higher, a higher level. You understand of, of spirituality, walking out the spirituality. Mm-hmm. And pass this on. to share. All right, pass it on. Pass it on. Right. So speaking to yourselves. Right, speaking to yourselves. And let's just show this right here in I and I Bible right here. Here's what we're reading right here. Speaking to yourselves, right? Speaking to yourselves in, in psalms, right? And hymns and spiritual songs. Speaking to who? Yourselves. That means speaking to yourself, yourself, and speaking to your brothers and sisters, your fellows. You know, and those who seek to do the will of Abba, Father. Right? Singing, right? It says singing and making melody, making melody, harmony. In your heart to Adonai, to the Lord, to the Master, to our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, giving thanks, Misgana, 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 Hulgize, always for all things to, not unto, strike out that un, but to God and the Father in the name of our Lord and Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of Getach and Jesus Christos, in the name of Adonenu Yeshua HaMoshiach. You see that, verses 19 and 20? That is where, that's why the music, in other words, that's why the music takes you the furthest. You understand? But even the music by itself cannot bridge the gap. Remember it says, in the, to, to who? To who are we singing? To Abba. You understand? To the Father, right? In the name of, Right? Not the names, but in the name, right, of our Lord, of our Master. He is the Masa. He is the Moshiach. This is our Masa. You know what I'm saying? This is our Masa, if you, if you please. Masa, Moshiach, you get it? Uh, this is the Negus Moshi, right? But then along comes Antichrist. Boom. Right? Then, then comes along Antichrist. You wonder where this would, would come in, right? And the exposed DVD, you need to get a copy of it. Check it out on the YouTubes or if it's still out there, you can get a copy from I and I or any of the other um, um, brothers and sisters out there who have this. You understand? So get a copy. If you have a local one who has exposed DVDs, you know, you can also, you know, you, you can also patronize them, especially if they are fellows. You know what I'm saying? If they are our brethren in faith, not just because they're black, you know what I'm saying? Not because they have dreadlocks. So you, you, know, you, know, you have to over that, and there's a very important reason for that. You know what I'm saying? Um, so here comes Caesar Bogiers. Caesar Bogiers, right? Now, this image, or the image that, that shows Yeshua HaMoshiach as an Ethiopian of the Ethiopian problem, there was a Roman um, historian of the first century, when Jerusalem under Vespasian and Tito or Titus was destroyed and the Jews were, the, the black Hebrew, the black Jews were killed and taken into slavery, who said that the Jews are of the Ethiopian problem, of the race or the seed. Remember, remember Abraham to, to his seed, and that seed is Yeshua. That seed, that kinsman redeemer, the spiritual kinsman redeemer of our souls. You know, the shepherd, the word says, of our souls. 
You know what I'm saying? And the testimony of Nagusa Nagas Kadamawi Haila Shalase, Haila Shalase the first is of and concerning Jesus Christos. Right? Let's understand that because some folks, some of our own people are, are missing that point. And so they are missing the boat. They are missing Zion train. You understand? Know and where are they left? Let's bring it up. They are left, right? They are left right here, right? They are left right here, seeing Zion before them, but there's this gap right here. So how, do, how is that gap filled up? You understand? Know how, how do we bridge that gap? Here's how we bridge that gap. You understand? Know Here's how we bridge that gap right here. You know and we bridge that gap in the teaching of his majesty. We bridge that gap, right, in Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? Remember sinful, you know what I'm and, uh, Babylon, the Babylon man, Babylon over here, Zion over there. You know what I'm Remember the Aital brought them out, brought us halfway. You know what I'm The dreadlocks brought us halfway. All those other, even the red, gold, and green, and some of the basic information brings us like a roughly halfway or a little less than halfway. You know, thanks and praise and the psalms and the music, especially Parhana Selassie, because Bob Marley's music is so heavily rooted and grounded in the Bible in such a special way that there's rare artists that really are able to, I don't even say duplicate it, but, it, but even do likewise. Many of the better artists out there, they have very biblical or very grounded and a rooted, you understand, know, foundation in the Wengel, whether they know it or not, but they need to know it. You know what I'm saying? So it's Yeshua HaMoshiach. It's a Yeshua's crystal, so our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That is that way. You see the way? So, so they came halfway, but now it's Christ that leads us all the way to Holy Jah, right? To, to Abba Kedus, to our Holy Father, to Zion, and to Jah's eternal life, away from sinful man or Babylon, away from death and destruction. We're speaking spiritually. We're not just speaking about land mass over here or there, but we're using this as a, as a word, you know what I'm saying, as a word picture, all right, as a word picture. So this we didn't even think that we were going to touch on right here. But, of course, um, you have to be um, sensitive to the Holy Spirit speaking, and I, I hope and pray that ones and ones were able to really get something rooted and grounded in their heart, in their mind, their body, their soul, you know, and with this particular word. Because we're going to go on on Caesar Bogiers, the Antichrist, the counterfeit. You know, saying what is that? What is that counterfeit sign? All right, we just had to rightly divide the word right here because when we get up to this verse, verse 18 of chapter 16 of Matthew, Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, after um, Simon Peter, right? He said, you are the Christ, the son of the Bain um, Ha Elohim Hayim. You are the son of the living God. You know, over then Christ said that it's not the Eucharist, the Shigawadem, which, which, which revealed this to you. It is my father. The father revealed this even before, you know, then, even before that, that outstretched hand on the cross. You understand, fulfilling, right, fulfilling, let's bring this up right here, that outstretched hand on the cross, right, and, and says even with his hand stretched out, still they will not. It's very interesting with us as black folks, the lost sheep, and black people. Sometimes it's the hardest thing, even with Christ being black, for them to receive the fullness of his spirit. And, you know, that, that, that is very interesting. Or, or they just think of him just as one among many. You understand, one among many possibilities, which is, uh, I, that, that's just like, how can you say His Majesty is God and King of Kings and, and, and not listen to His Word? You know, but let's pray for them because a lot of us at some point were like that too. You understand, know because remember the reality was already there. You understand, the manifestation was already there. It was like He was crucified just yesterday. It was already done. It was sealed up. You understand? So, with this in mind, Right, because we're coming up to roughly the hour, the hour point. We might want to segue a little bit on another subject matter as we come forward to the um, the Caesar, right? The Caesar versus um, Caesar versus Christ. Before we go in this in, in this um, first uh, hour right here, 
let's just um, cut to the chase for a moment, right, and go to Matthew 22 and 21, where it says, And they said to him, Caesar's, right, um, okay, this is render unto Caesar, or um, what does Caesar give unto God, what is God, we have to go to John, right, um, so here's what they said here, here's what they said right here, um, with the, the, and this is what the church, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church is also, this is the apostasy, this is the falling away as well, in John chapter 19, verses 12 and verse 15, so stay tuned for the next part.